Uh, hi. Uh, this is my first video of what you know, will hopefully be many videos on this channel. Uh, but today I'm going to be ranking all of the worlds in Super Mario Wonder. So we'll see how it goes. Starting off the list at number 8, World 3, Shining Falls. Well, this world isn't really bad, it's just not my favorite. It only has 6 levels and the theming is a bit weird. Like, why Golden Waterfalls? It just feels random and out of place. It's kind of neat to see a new location, but at its core, it's really just a cape. The first level is really good, and I enjoy it a lot, but it's weird that it's the only mountain level in the world and the rest is just underground. I don't dislike any levels except for probably the one with the lift that reminds me of like a quickly made Mario Maker level. But by far the biggest letdown is the ending of the world where instead of a castle or at least something, like World 5, there's just nothing. It's just a poplar house where you just get a royal seed and be done with it. If there were a proper ending to the world, it might have been ranked higher, but there's nothing worse than playing through the whole world and ending it with just nothing. Not a terrible world, but it's just not really that good. And number seven is gonna have to be the special world. While it's cool, it just doesn't really feel too special. Most of the levels are way too easy for the final world and don't really feel different from normal levels. I was hoping they would be closer to the special world levels, New Super Mario Bros. U, where they're noticeably different from normal ones, but the only actual difficult level, besides I guess the Goomba one, is the obviously the final one. And it's great, it's difficult, but it feels out of place, being the only difficult level in the world. It has some fun levels, but it's far from special, and the only reason it's really higher than Shining Falls is just because it has more levels. And number six is gonna have to be World 5, The Fungi Mind. It, it suffers from the same problem that Shining Falls does, being that it doesn't have a proper ending. Um, but at least instead of a Popman House, we get somewhat of a level, even though there isn't really any danger in it. And that's just where the similarity ends, because this world is actually really good. The first few levels are awesome, being set in the mushroom forest, and of course we get the King Boo level. The mines themselves don't really host any crazy levels, and although the mine levels kind of blend together, it's still a lot of fun. It's a really good world. And coming in at number 5, we have World 6, Deep Magma Bog. Like 3D World, it's kind of like a fake-out final world filled with lava. And it's clear that it's a lava world, the naming is strange it implies that it's some sort of like dried up lake i don't i don't really know it's i don't know why they named it that why is it a volcano uh aside from the name it's great though it's massive and the many floors add mystery to it like fungi mines a lot of the levels are similar in aesthetic but are fun nonetheless the boss is a nice twist on bowser jr because he cleansed himself similar to ludwig and new samarba's you and it's definitely one of the better bosses but yeah overall great world Number four is definitely Fluff Puff Peaks. This world has some great levels because it's a dual world with both snow and sky. Kind of branches off from standard Mario theming. It focuses more on the sky part though, which is kind of a shame because I really enjoy the first couple uh, ice levels, but it kind of falls short or the connection between two parts of the world. It's almost like it's just two different like worlds put in one because it's just a map transition. We don't actually get to like see the change in a level. And it's just, like, strange that they decided to make it like this, like, where it's like you have snow and then it's just kind of sky is like completely different. But, like, the levels themselves are, are really fun and I like them. Uh, it would have been nice to have, like, a level like Cosmic Hoppos, though, where you actually go into the sky, but it's a great world. Number three is the Petal Isles. Uh, it's not really a world, but it's like the group of islands that connects all the other worlds, kind of like a hub world, so I, you know, I thought to count it. Uh, it has some really fun, memorable levels, such as Downpour Uproar, Muncher Fields, and Robert Cove. I appreciate that it's not just like beach and water levels, though, because these kind of get old. Um, but it gets even better when you, you, know, you got to enter the final part of the world and take on five more levels, and each one is memorable, especially the, uh, the one with electricity and, of course, the final boss. It didn't disappoint, or at least compared to, like, the other bosses. Uh, I mean, it just does its job well. It's a great way to connect the worlds, and it's really fun. And number two has to be the Pipe Rock Plateau. It's just the perfect first world. It has some fun levels, great music, and awesome wonder flowers. Um, the boss is also the best boss in the game, in my opinion. Uh, even better than the final boss. And my one complaint is just it's the grassland. Like, I just 
We need to retire that, just like the standard Mario theming, especially with the first world being just grass. I mean, there are levels that take place in Savannah and Autumn, like a lot of them just feel kind of samey though, just due to the theming. But all of the levels are great. There's a lot of very memorable ones, like the ones that take place in the cave, Cosmic Hoppos, where you climb a mountain into space, and of course, Piranha Plants on Parade, that one's classic. While the theming's a bit bland, it's still one of the best first worlds I've encountered. And number one, the best world in the game has to be the Sunbake Desert. It's, in my eyes, the best desert world in any Mario game. I, instead of just the normal, boring deserts, they feel animated with vibrant clouds, Arabian-type buildings, some of the levels even take place at night, all topped off with like an amazing desert theme. None of the levels feel too similar, and every single one is amazing. The Desert Mystery is my favorite one, taking place in the desert at nighttime. And the Wonder Fire lets you run through a pyramid with the wall chasing you. Another level, Color Switch Dungeon, is more puzzle-based level, showcasing the on-off blocks from Mario Maker. And the Wonder Fire even has Shadow Mario chasing you. And Ninja Jump Party is one of the most unique Mario levels I've seen in a while. And even the world map almost feels like a level itself, because you got a giant palace and oasis and things hidden in every which place. Honestly, this world is just nothing short of perfection. And that's the video. Uh, I don't really know, you know, what direction I'm gonna take my channel, but I'll probably make more content on this game, maybe Mario Maker, and just maybe some other stuff, like who knows. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more of this game, definitely subscribe and like the video if you agree with my ranking. But yeah, I mean, you know, have a good one.